In this video, I will be showing you how you can use a framing square and the step off method. Now, this is actually the same method you will use when laying out a stair stringer. So pay attention, and this might be helpful to anyone who might be having a difficult time trying to figure out some of my other roof rafter layout or calculation videos. Now, this is going to be a two-part series in this video. I am going to start with an eight foot long wall or an eight foot span and a 5 and 12 roof pitch. So we're going to have 5 inches on our framing square and 12 inches on our framing square. And we are not going to have any odd fractions or inches. This is going to be for an 8 foot span and a 5 and 12 roof pitch. And the first thing we need to do is split the span in two. And before I show you how to lay it out on the framing square, I want to show you how it would actually lay out on an existing roof rafter with no ridge because I think this is going to be the best way to explain the process. So with half of the span representing four feet this is going to provide us with four 12 inch increments and we're not going to start at the corner of the seat cut. We're going to start at the bottom of the roof rafter and this will be the point where the roof rafter would connect to the face of the wall framing plate on the exterior of the building. So we're going to be starting right here. So let's go ahead and put the framing square back in there. And you can see here where we have the 12 inch mark on the framing square, 12 inches from the inside and then five inches up. And you can use the outside of the framing square if that's going to be easier also. Just make sure that you're working with a 12 inch increment on the bottom and in our case, a five inch increment on the top. If you were going to have a four and 12 roof pitch, then we would be working with the four inch line on the framing square. If it was going to be an eight and 12 roof pitch, then we would change the angle of the roof rafter so that the eight inch line on the framing square would line up with the bottom of the roof rafter. And if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. I'm going to make another video and I will put a link to that video video in the video description box to provide you with a few more examples with different roof pitches. So again, we're going to line up the 12 inch mark on the framing square, either on the inside or the outside. Just make sure that you don't line it up on the inside on the bottom and then on the outside at the top, unless all of your measurements are correct, of course. And then we will line up the 5 and 12 mark on the side of the rafter. So this right here represents one increment and we're simply going to mark the rafter. And of course that will look something like this. Just a line here and a line here. And again this unit of measurement right here represents one foot of horizontal distance with a 5 inch rise. Let's go ahead and put our framing square back in there. And then we're going to slide the framing square up until our 12 inch mark on the framing square lines up with this line here at the bottom of the rafter. And of course, this will provide us with another 12 inch horizontal measurement with a five inch rise. So if I was going to measure from this line here, if I drew a level line across here and then came up here, this would be 10 inches of vertical distance. 10 inches of vertical distance, 24 inches of horizontal distance, and two increments for our roof rafter. And we're just simply going to work our way up until we get to the top of the rafter. So again, framing square, slide it up and line it up again, and then go ahead and make your marks so that we can create another unit of measurement or increment with our framing square. And of course, providing us with a better idea of what we're actually going to be doing when we're actually laying out the roof rafter. And I went ahead and threw in the measurement from this side to this side of the framing square for a five and 12 roof pitch. And that's going to be one foot, one inch. And you can always use this measurement here to double check this measurement here before you actually cut the roof rafter. And if this actually makes sense here, 
we can go back down to the bottom and start laying out our roof rafter in the same way we just did on the top with our 5 and 12 measurements on the framing square lining up with the bottom of the roof rafter or in this case here this is actually going to be the top of the roof rafter and it's going to be a good idea to mark the top of the roof rafter so you don't get confused and I'll show you an example of that here in a few seconds so we went ahead and marked the area with the framing square that's going to represent one unit of measurement a 12 inch horizontal run along with our five inch rise then we're simply going to make four units to represent our four foot half span measurement so the top that's going to connect to the ridge is going to be over here and the bottom that we're going to be using for our seat cut will be over here and to do this we're going to need to create another plumb line and you can do that in the same way you laid out this here so again here's the bottom of the roof rafter and here's the top of the roof rafter and while laying out your pattern make sure that you mark either the top or the bottom or both because this can really be confusing when you're turned around and you think you're actually working with the bottom when you're actually working with the top and since our ridge is going to be an inch and a half thick we're going to deduct half of the distance from the line that would represent the center of the ridge. And of course, if your ridge is going to be thicker or thinner, you would simply compensate with that over here. So by the time we have reached this point here, we still have four increments along with a line that we're going to use for our seat cut and a new line that we're going to cut that will represent the end of the roof rafter and the part of the roof rafter that will connect to the ridge. So let's go ahead and go up to our original spot again, just to give you an idea of what we're working with in case you forgot. And when it comes to cutting the length of the seat cut, I would recommend something about two, two and a half inches, and I wouldn't recommend going much shorter than that. And of course, that's this measurement here. However, I don't think it's going to be a big deal if you make this measurement the same length as your wall framing width. Just don't make it any longer if you don't have to, with the exception of hips and valley roof rafters. And to mark the measurement for the seat cut, you can simply position the framing square in the same way you did before with the 5 and 12. And then measure this distance here. Slide the framing square over until you get the desired distance you want for the top of the seat cut. And then after that, you are done. You have laid out your roof rafter. And now would be a good time to cut it. Now, I recommend cutting your pattern and then laying out one more roof rafter. Use this as a pattern to lay out another roof rafter. And to do that, you just simply set this roof rafter on top of another piece of lumber and then line this side up here or the top with the board on the bottom and then mark the marks that you need for the seat cut and the ridge and then cut two rafters and then put them together and make sure that everything works just fine and you don't need to use a long board for the ridge here you could simply grab a scrap piece of lumber and maybe have one person at the bottom here another person over here and then you up on a ladder to make sure that everything is going to work out if not then that would be a good time to make any adjustments you need to to your roof rafters and trust me I've used this method before and had to make adjustments now remember this is part one I didn't go over any of the span distances that might be something like eight foot two and a half inches however I will be providing another video for that and if I don't have a link here at the end of the video then make sure that you check the video description box or comment area